Hi and welcome to Introduction to Materials Quick Start Video for V-Ray for Revit. In this first video about materials, we'll go over applying materials using V-Ray, while the next video will focus on how to edit materials with the standalone V-Ray Material Editor. Now launch your version of Revit. Here we're using 2017 and load the project file materials1.rvt which you can download from the video's tutorial page linked below. This project was created in Revit 2016 and will upgrade automatically to newer versions of Revit, but may have issues loading into Revit versions earlier than 2016. Now that the project is loaded, click the V-Ray tab. Let's start by just rendering what we already have set up. In the current view dropdown, select the Render 1 view. Leave quality to draft and set resolution to crop region set to printer with a DPI of 96. And then go ahead and click render with V-Ray. V-Ray by default already takes the settings you had used to set up materials in Revit in the first place and automatically generates V-Ray versions to render them the way you had set them up. Now, let's say you want to replace this metal panel material with a V-Ray specific material. To find out what material is applied, select one of the walls and in the properties, click Edit Type. Click to edit the structure entry. You'll see that the outermost finish on the exterior side is Metal Panel. Let's cancel out of these windows and go back to the V-Ray tab and click Material Browser. In this window, we want to find the Metal Panel material. Type it in the filter box here and it shows up. Right now you can see it's set to Autogen. This means the material is automatically generated by V-Ray based on the existing settings for the material created in Revit originally. Click to pull down the menu and you'll see a few different options. Let's go ahead and start with the Color option. This replaces the material with just a basic color. Just click to select from the palette or click Advance for more color defining options. We'll select a simple brown here and render to see the outcome. Now this is useful for a few reasons, like when you're testing color palettes early in the design stages or if you're rendering a more diagrammatic image. The next entry is Diffuse Texture. That allows you to use a simple image as the base for the material. Click here to select a texture. We'll go to this brick diffuse.jpg from the tutorial's assets and click open. Render and let's see what this texture looks like. We can see right away that this texture is not sized quite right. From the look of the bricks and the texture, this square looks to be about 2.5 by 2.5 meters square, but the default here is only 0.3 meters square. Let's set that to 2.5 in width and height. Your values may be different if you're using imperial units like feet and inches instead of metric. If so, set your size to 7.5 by 7.5 feet. Click to render again and the bricks come out nicely sized. You can of course set the rotation of the texture using the slider here, but our bricks are looking pretty good now. Now the texture we have looks pretty flat and that's because this is just an image for the material with no additional parameters to give the surface more detail other than this simple texture. Now stop your progressive render and let's move on to using a V-Ray material. This takes you to a file browser that takes you to a folder that has a, a small library of materials for you that are installed with V-Ray for Revit. Navigate to where you downloaded the assets for this tutorial for some materials that we bundled with this exercise. Select brick.vrmat and click open. That material actually uses the same texture image of the bricks that we just used, so we don't need to bother to change the size. Click render with V-Ray and let's see how it looks. You can see that the brick texture looks much better and has more dimension to it as it's a full V-Ray material. To edit the material, click this button in the Material Map dialog to access its parameters. 
We'll go over editing materials much more in the next video, but you can experiment in the VR Matte Editor and see how that changes the look of the material. Just make sure to come back to the original settings to continue with this tutorial. Now let's take a look at Global Materials. Click the Global Materials tab in the V-Ray Material Browser. Now these controls allow you to override all the materials in a project with the one you specify here. For example, any surfaces that do not have a material assigned, or if there's a problem with that material, it will render with the Unmapped Materials color, which here is set to Magenta. You can override both opaque and transparent materials by clicking the checkboxes. Change the current view to Render 2 and click Render with V-Ray. We made the same overrides in the previous Intro to Lighting Quick Start video to make it easier to judge just the lighting in a scene by using a simple gray material override, which is seen here. This may also be good for nice looking conceptual renderings as well without worrying about all the materials in a project. We're not just limited to a diffuse color, we can use a pre-made material by enabling the Use Pre-made Opaque Material checkbox here. Click on the Material Ellipses icon and select the material file inkwash matte found in the downloaded assets for this tutorial. Leave the width and the height as is. Notice that there's a sub material. Some V-Ray materials can be combined or layered together for a more intricate look needed by a surface. In this case, we have a tune material. Select the ink wash tune white material from the pull down. This material creates a black outline. For the transparent override, click on the color pull down for diffuse and choose a cyan or aqua color. Set the transparency to be about 0.95. Now set the glossiness to 0.85 to allow the reflections and refractions in these surfaces to be a bit blurry. Click render. The tune outline gives you nice solid diffuse surfaces like this light gray but adds black outlines around the geometry, making for a pretty nice conceptual image of your design. You can see in the fenestration or glazing of this building that there is a nice blurred look to the rooms inside, as well as the reflections of the environment due to the glossiness value we set earlier. Click on the Material Ellipses icon to choose another material. Select the Basswood Model dot VR mat found in the downloaded assets. As most architects and designers can tell you, there's a palpable beauty to real scale models of a design, and this material makes your Revit rendering look like it's been made with basswood. Set the width to 5 meters and the height to 14.6 meters. Click to choose a pre-made material for the transparent override. Click the ellipses button and choose the transparent plastic VR matte material file to give your glazing the look of scale model plastic. Set your current view to render 3, which is more of an overhead view. Click render with V-Ray and you'll get a view looking down at a scale model made of plastic and basswood. There is a library of these materials for your use found in the location where you installed V-Ray for Revit. In most cases, that's the C drive, program files, chaos group, V-Ray, V-Ray for Revit, content, VR Mat editor. Here you'll find a variety of surface types to use, as well as several diagrammatic materials designed for conceptual renderings like the ones we've seen in this tutorial, including different tune materials and even the look of 3D printed materials. Thank you for joining us for this Intro to Materials Quick Start video for V-Ray for Revit. Uh.